Welcome back, Canonites. Here we are once again for another issue of Halo Escalation. This one feels like quite an improvement over the last one, but it's still not that great, sadly. Let's dive right in and find out why. And don't worry, you don't have to turn down your speakers. I won't be shouting as much this time around. Our story starts off with a flashback to a day prior. On Installation 03, Black Team is investigating a series of slipspace signatures near the Oni camp and mentions that Ivanov Station can't be reached. We, of course, know why. It's not long before they find the body of the Didact. Though he initially seems to be out cold, he soon wakes and, upon seeing Black Team, utters a line that I find really hilarious, actually. <clears throat> More of you, unacceptable. So, my terrible impression aside, when I read that line in my head, it just makes me laugh. Seriously, just pause the video, read the line here in the Didact's voice in your head. I guarantee you it'll give you a few laughs. So as the Didact presumably disposes of Black Team, Again, off screen, a monitor emerges from the composer's abyss. This is 859 Static Carillion, the monitor of the Forge world upon which composers are made. To pause a moment, this monitor's name is actually quite appropriate. 859 is the keeper of the composers, and his name, Carillion, is a type of instrument composed of 23 bells that are played by pressing keys. It's almost like a giant piano that uses bells instead of strings. So, to Brian Reed's credit, the name of this monitor is actually quite appropriate. Anyway, 859 soon comes across an army of Promethean crawlers, and then the Didact himself, covered in blood. I'll pause a moment again to wonder exactly how the crawlers got to Installation 03. Were they somehow brought through the portal when the Didact fell through? Did they come straight from Requiem? If the latter, how did they get there so quickly? <sighs> Yay, more unanswered questions. So, the Didact and 859 exchanged some words. 859 explaining that the portal from his forge to the Composer's Abyss had been opened, and when no contact could be made with 049 Abject Testament, 859 decided to investigate. Somewhat intriguing is that 859 refers to the Didact as the Master of My Charges. The strange part is that the Composer is a Builder Construct, but the Didact is a Warrior Servant, though granted the highest rank of that rate, Promethean. So what could 859 mean? Another question for Cataloger System Bravo, the Halo Twitter. Anyway, after 859 explains its presence on the ring and where the installation is, again the Composer Forge, the Didact orders it to show him. So, before we move forward, let's talk about Black Team's demise. Now it is nice to know that they were killed by the Didact directly, since it makes their deaths seem much more reasonable. That being said, this does not in any way make up for how the team was treated in the last issue. I stand by my previous statements. It's a disservice to these characters and an insult to those of us who knew them. Moving forward. We're now back with Blue Team on the Composer's Forge. Giving credit where credit is due, it's kind of interesting to see what could be something like a Forerunner City. Kelly even notes that Dr. Halsey would be amazed by the installation. As Blue Team continues to explore, they find six new Composers, and of course, the Didact himself, who seems to be in possession of an Activation Index. As Blue Team opens fire, the Didact uses Earthquake. It's super effective. After a brief monologue, the Didact unleashes newly created Prometheans instead of taking out Blue Team himself. Because, of course. Fresh off an overkill, and he decides to let his Prometheans, machines which John was able to mow through during the events of Halo 4, take on Blue Team. Yeah, great plan there, Didact. As Blue Team fights for their lives, 859 Static Carillion reappears and accuses the Didact of breaking their agreement, which involved not making more Promethean Knights. The Didact dismisses the accusation, saying that the Knights will soon be dispatched to Requiem, and then demands that the Monitor fulfill its end of their agreement. Fear-stricken, 859 notes that it is being done, and Installation 03 appears in the sky. So back with Blue Team fighting for their lives against Prometheans with Promethean weapons appropriately, 859 decides to introduce itself to Blue Team because why not? 859 explains that the Didact is now in possession of Installation 03, intending to repair damages caused by humans. Funny enough, the Monitor notes that the Didact blames humans for a number of things. So as the Monitor goes on, we do learn something interesting about the Composer. 859 says that the minds of the new Prometheans are being added to the whole, which seems to imply that a hive mind like connection exists between the Knights, and presumably, anything that was composed. 859's exact quote is, their memories are being added to the whole, as was of course the plan when the Composer was built. But they also bring terror, they bring fear, they bring rage and confusion. So, I'm really not sure what 859 means here. 
Is he connected to this network and feeling the emotions of these composed humans? What is this hole to which he's referring? Obviously, Chakas, Forthenko, and other composed humans weren't added to it, or at least they never mentioned anything like it. Anyway, the Monitor further reveals that the Didact intends to use Installation 03 on Earth to wipe out humanity from the galaxy. His time in the Cryptum really did drive this guy insane. Right up until the end of the Forerunner Flood War, the Or Didact was strongly opposed to the use of the Halo Rings, even berating his copy, the Iso Didact, for giving in to the Builder-created plan. Now, after 100,000 years of solitude, he's ready for mass genocide. But on a more serious note, let's consider what might really be happening here. The Didact is replacing the Lost Composer on Installation 03, and he has the Activation Index. It was speculated by Oni scientists that the Index could have secondary and even tertiary applications. Okay, Specimen 2006. The artifact is believed to be the Activation Index for Gamma Halo, based on anecdotal information from... Alpha and Delta Halo missions. Key component in the activation and firing of the Halo weapon. A few of us have been speculating lately if it has secondary and tertiary purposes as well. Theories still forthcoming. One theory that's gaining momentum is that the Didact will use the Halo to amplify the composer's signal, perhaps allowing him to compose all of Earth in a matter of seconds. That's truly a terrifying thought. Back to our story, 859 decides to help Blue Team against the Didact, not because of the intended genocide, it notes that it could care less if all of humanity were wiped out, but because the Didact violated their agreement by bringing Promethean Knights to the Composer Forge. With 859's help, Blue Team is able to make it back to Gamma Halo and out of the Composer's Abyss, just as a new Composer is put in its place. Just as things seem safe, the Didact reappears and starts to deal with Blue Team, by which I mean Fred, Kelly, and Linda. John somehow avoided being seen and is able to sneak up on the Didact and stab him in the eye. Without flinching, the Didact grabs the Chief and starts crushing his skull, and thus ends the comic. So, certainly an improvement, but still fraught with flaws. I swear, this story arc is turning the Didact into the worst supervillain since any bad guy from a James Bond movie. He kills off Black Team without a second thought, but feels the need to let his Prometheans deal with Blue Team later. It's only once he loses a freaking eye that he decides, Huh, I guess I should probably deal with this shit. I mean, it was forgivable in the campaign since the Didact didn't know how much of a threat the Chief could be. As we see at the end of Halo 4, the Didact was done messing around with the Spartan and about to finish him off. The only thing that saved John were Cortana's actions. And now in Escalation, the Didact has to lose a freaking eye to decide to crush John's skull. Never mind that there's no real suspense since we know the Chief survives. And then there's the new composers. How much do you want to bet that they're not going to be relevant after the conclusion of this story arc? Can you imagine how confusing Halo 5 would be, especially for fans who didn't read the comics if the Didact showed up with a new composer? Even tossing that aside, it kind of cheapens Halo 4's story for me. We went through all that effort to stop the Didact, and in barely a day, he gets his hands on a brand spanking new composer. Now now, I know what you're thinking. Toa, Bungie did the same thing with Delta Halo and Halo 2. Arguably, yes. But that does not make it okay. In addition, we at least knew that there were other Halos in the galaxy. Is it true? More or less. Technically, this installation suppose, has a maximum effective radius of 25,000 light years. But once the others follow suit, this galaxy will be quite devoid of life. All of Halo 4 makes a huge deal about this one composer, as if it were the last one. Yeah, we know there used to be a lot, but the expanded universe always seemed to apply, at least to me, that these other units were decommissioned or destroyed. It just felt so cheap. So with a sigh, let's bring this to an end. Escalation 9 was better, but still flawed, yada yada yada. I am somewhat more excited for issue 10 than I was for this one, but I'm not really getting my hopes up. Looking forward, issues 11 and 12 will be dealing with a new mysterious bioweapon, as recently revealed, and many of fans seem to believe that it will have to do with the bioweapon Locke and company will be hunting down in Halo Nightfall. This would certainly be an exciting story arc if that turns out to be true, but as I often say, only time will tell. Well, thanks for joining me, guys, for another review of Halo Escalation. I hope I didn't break your eardrums this time. For now, this has been Halo Cannon, and I'll see you next time, Spartans. Hey, guys, thanks for watching my video. It means a lot. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and maybe share it around on whatever social media you choose. Your support is greatly appreciated. I cannot stress that enough. Thanks for watching.